Welcome to Beyond Exosomes Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Petrellis, and we are excited for a special episode today. Um, this, this guest I've had on for, you know, for a few months, I've had this guest book, and I've been really excited for this day to come. Um, you know, from Boston College, is the current video, creative video producer at Boston College for football and basketball and does a slew of other sports. Um, we're going to see some real fun clips that he's put together today. And just overall, if you've been watching Boston College football, you know that you're going to watch a game in which a team's going to compete really tough against anybody in the country but quietly their social media department has been smoking teams week after week with the stuff they've been putting out there and our guest has a lot to do with that um also had an internship with the cleveland browns has had internships at harvard uh sports internships as well as um caltech so he's been all over the place a lot of different places and and for you coaches out there that are looking to up your social media game this is the guy to, to listen to to pay attention to and love to have on the show today and i'm so lucky to have him uh, ladies and gentlemen from Boston College, Brent Greenberg. Hi, everybody. Uh, all right, Brent. So we're going to kind of jump right into it. You're the first like non-coach I've kind of had on this show. So um, talk to talk to the audience a little bit about where you come from, you know, how you got into this, your background a little bit in your history um, of, of doing what you do. Yeah, so I am from Maryland. I've been someone who's been around sports my whole life, especially college athletics. Both my parents went to Maryland, so I kind of grew up at Maryland football and basketball games. And I've always had a love for sports, but I also knew that I probably wouldn't go pro in sports. And I found kind of a niche that, and while I was in college, that I fell in love with, which was the creative side, that I didn't really know was an option until I really got to college. And so, um, that kind of brought me to where I am today and how I'm now doing stuff on social. And that's awesome. And sports is just such a great influence in general as a young kid. And, you know, you play at the college level too. You play lacrosse at Mount Union. We know as a, as a huge uh, football school, but um, you know, playing college athlete anywhere in any conference D1, D2, D3 is a tall task. And um, so, you know, how would you say sports has kind of influenced your life, especially in college and, and in high school influenced you to say, Hey, you know what, I want to pursue something that is involved in the world of sports as a career. Yeah. I mean, from the get-go, I fell in love with sports. I played everything growing up from basketball to soccer to baseball and then lacrosse. And I mean, I was that AAU kid that was going from travel soccer practice from four to six, driving 45 minutes and going to basketball practice from seven to nine in elementary middle school. And from that, I knew that like sports was something that I wanted to continue for essentially the rest of my life and being involved. And I always, I always loved that. And then, I mean, I was that kid that would, when he played video games, would focus on building the best team, not playing all of the games. And that's when I knew that like the behind the scenes was where I wanted to be. And from there, it's just, it's kind of all molded itself into kind of how I got to here. Yeah, and, and I get it. Franchise mode or, you know, I used to be the guy that downloaded the college football roster to the Madden roster and was able to bring some of these players and develop them. So I get the world that you're coming from for sure. Um, yeah. so, so talk about it because you did play, you know, college sports, but talking to you, I mean, you're an incredibly hard worker. And that's another big reason or a big thing I learned about you is you kind of grinded, man. Talk about pursuing your career, especially once you got through a year of college, because you did some traveling right out the gate and you really pursued your passion very young. Yeah. So when I was in college, I was lucky enough. I got an internship at Caltech. So I, it was kind of crazy when I got it and I didn't really know what I was going to do, but I yeah, my parents helped me. I got, I'm got i super lucky that my parents were super supportive and they helped me pack up and I moved to LA for a summer at 20 years old, 19 years old by myself and now in New City. And it's funny because I had actually traveled to Israel right before that. So I spent 10 days in Israel, went, um, flew back on a Friday and then flew out to LA on a, a Monday pretty much with my dad. And then he was there for two days and then left me so I had to figure it out we shipped a car out there and then I was on my own figuring out LA for the first time by myself wow 
It's amazing. And, and at such a young age too, you know, um, and, and that's what I found so interesting about you. It seems like you're the type of kid that wants to go out there and learn and take chances and you don't care where it is or when it is, you want to be a part of it. And I know something really cool um, that you tagged up with out there was the shootout for soldiers, I believe. Um, and that was one of your first big projects that, you know, when we talked that you felt really kind of steered your passion towards a direction that you knew you wanted to go. Talk about that project that you were involved in the shootout for soldiers and, you know, how it impacted you to maybe make a certain career move to a certain direction. Yeah. So once I kind of got out to California, I noticed that I found shootout for soldiers just as a, it was a nonprofit. It's a 24 hour lacrosse event that raised money for wounded American veterans. And it was the first time that I noticed it and even saw it. And so towards kind of the end of the summer, I reached out to them actually and was like interested in kind of helping out as I could. And then um, that kind of formula created itself from there. And I kept stay I stayed on in the fall doing stuff remotely. And then for about a year, I was kind of a communications coordinator doing stuff for like writing press releases, doing social. And then the year after I became the director of communications, and it was something that it was the first chance for me to really creatively have some kind of freedom that I could kind of start making things on my own and testing out what I could and couldn't do. So when you, when you talk about uh, working remotely, so were you back in school doing that job remotely? Yeah. So the entire, so essentially CF for soldiers is lacrosse events around the country over the summer. So I, when I first really started doing a lot of work with them, I was in school as a student athlete and doing this on the side. And then over the summer, I would, I went to a couple events the following year. And then because I was also at Harvard at that time during as a summer intern. So then I went to, the, they have an event in Boston, they have an event in Baltimore and DC. And so I went to a couple events. And then the year after I went to I think all of the events, which was eight or seven or eight across the, the country. Wow. I mean, so there's a lot of sacrifice that comes with that. I mean, a young kid your age, when your friends are all coming home from school and, you know, seeing each other for the first time, high school friends, you're, you're off traveling first out of the country and then back into the country on the other side of the country. Um, mm -hmm. So pursuing your passion and then working remotely, doing a job while being a full-time student and a college athlete, again, pursuing a passion that you clearly that, you know, you're really good at as we're going to see later, but um, also just knowing that this is the direction that you want to go. Talk about sacrifice then. As a young kid in college, you're making a lot of sacrifices and you're just work, 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 and not as much enjoying maybe, and you're playing sports and stuff, but maybe not enjoying as much of the college life like everybody else. So talk about the sacrifices you felt you made in college a little bit that really catapulted to you are where you are right now. Yeah, I mean, I think I sacrificed more school-wise than anything. I am someone, I like learning. I love learning and I love school, but like, I understand it's more or less a means to an end, I guess, in my opinion, especially in the college, like in, to me in college, you put as much as you want to get out of it. And I prioritize internships over classwork sometimes. And I thought that that was going to help me towards the end. And I, I think that kind of sacrifice there was more calculated than anything. But I mean, yeah, I, ever since I've started working, doing internships, everything, I, everything that I've done, I haven't considered work, honestly. And I think that kind of helps me realize I chose the right business to be in. But I, if I'm like working in sports, you're going to miss holidays, you're going to miss big events. And sometimes I'd rather be at like these sporting events because I, I absolutely love it. That's awesome, man. That's real good. Um, so I know you did, you know, obviously you built, you, you built a name for yourself out on the West coast. You come back to the East coast, you're working full time, you graduate from school. And one of the first bigger internships, I know you went to Harvard first, but you actually got to work with an NFL team. And that was really your first taste of the world of behind the scenes of, of a major um, professional sport. Talk about working for the Cleveland Browns you know, the, the attention that it brought to you about the professional game behind the scenes, but also what you learned there. I mean, I think you were there when they weren't great, right? So you didn't learn football yeah. per se, right? But you learned a lot of cool stuff, man. Talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I spent a f the f fall 17, fall 18, I think, with the Browns. And they 
or bad, but it was kind of cool. I was, it was the first time I've ever worked in a major stadium. I mean, I went to school at the D3 level, so I hadn't seen, like, even at BC, it's still, like, it's more of a really legit production of behind the scenes than it is at the D3 level, and so that was my first experience. I was essentially a game day PR guy, so I walked into, I would pass out stats at the end of each quarter, and then the cool part was post game. I would go into the into either the home team or opposing team locker room, and I would follow the media around as a recorder and record the interviews and then transcribe them. And so that was when I first realized, like, yeah, like these NFL guys know it's a business. They they get ten minutes to cool down and then they have to be ready to talk to um, talk to the media. And you can see that some of the young guys have no clue what they're doing, and the older guys are ready to go. But I thought it was something that I thought was fascinating to see how everyone realized that it's a business and knew it was a business, even at the player level. Wow. Wow. And, and what's a locker room look like? Is it just like media, suits, agents? I mean, what does an NFL locker room really look like? It was um, – it's interesting to see it post game, and especially now that I know it, it's like a, like BC and at the Power Five level. Because when you think about how quickly that they want to leave after the games, like they have like little. Normally, they'll have like name plates on every locker. By the time the game's over, like those are all gone, and like they're ready to pack up in thirty minutes and get out of there. But I think like it's especially the like the home team locker room like super nice the away team locker room is like metal lockers like you'll see it like it's just a big open room with metal lockers and it's just what they do yeah yeah um any funny stories any cool stories any like whoa stories like that just kind of you know whether it's funny or whether it's serious or anything that you kind of saw that you're just like wow this stands out for my time at the browns um i'd say the funniest is I, so miles garrett's first game it was his first preseason game he had showered and there were probably 15 or 20 people in the media waiting to talk to him post game and he's showering and he just took his merry time getting dressed not even looking anyone in the media in the eye just kind of slowly getting dressed standing there with a towel on looking at his phone putting one sock taking a minute to put a sock on it was like like they all knew that they had to wait and talk to him because he was the he was the guy, but he knew that he could take as long as he wanted. I mean, that's wild. And people just like, like attract, like ready to, as soon as the gun goes off, as soon as he looks up to acknowledge him, do people just like sprint mm-hmm. right over to him? Yeah. He kind of, I mean, there were probably 20 people within five feet of him changing and he's looking at his phone and he'll just turn around and you just saw the swarm. And you're just like, okay, like this is what's happening. Wow. So, um, I, and that's really cool. Now, now, what people don't know is while you were doing this internship with the Browns, you were also kind of still working at Harvard or you were at Harvard before and then kind of went back to Harvard after. So you were in the Boston area a little bit before you landed your gig at BC. So um, I got to ask you, living in Boston, I mean, Boston College, Harvard, talk about adjusting to the life in Boston because you're from Maryland, you said, um, mm-hmm. and Boston, different parts of the city are just so different from each other. So talk about adjusting to uh, life in Boston yeah I mean I think I was a little more prepared because I had the op- so I've had kind of two opportunities it was the LA living by myself part that kind of helped and helped me figure it out and then there was the I mean I'm from Maryland but like I say I'm from DC I'm 30 minutes outside of DC I've used public transportation all the time to get downtown to go to games to go to just to be downtown so I could I've had experience figuring out especially when I'm younger like you see like the maps of like public transit and you have to like use your finger to figure out where, like I used to do that growing up. So it's like, now I had, there's like an app now for public transit that made my life so easy and you knew when stuff was coming. But like, I think I was pretty well prepared for kind of that Boston, like public transit of dealing with like the green line and the red line and the buses. But it was definitely, I definitely didn't, utilize as much as Boston as I should have when I was here first I didn't know anyone I was still in college I was under 21 so I I couldn't go out to a lot of places and so I kind of stuck to what I knew but I would say the second time around once I kind of knew a bunch of people like it, it was fascinating to like see all the different corners of Boston 
That's awesome. And, um, you know, with that being said, so you were at Harvard, did an internship, and then I know you kind of went to BC. Now, before you landed your gig at BC, you did a little internship there uh, beforehand. So talk about the transition. How'd you go from internship to now becoming, you know, the video producer um, at Boston College? Yeah, so when I, so I was, um, at Harvard and needed in, um, to get college credit there. So I was a grad student at Emerson and the second, and it was a two year program. So I needed, so if I essentially needed to stay in Boston and an internship at BC opened up and I figured I was moving up. I was still going to the power five level, which is where I wanted to go as an end goal. And so I kind of jumped at it and I took essentially, I went level as a job title, but went up into the power five world and the only reason why I did a lot of video is they knew they knew I could do video, but then the first week we were still looking for a video intern, and I was like, I have experience, I can help out where it's needed, and so that kind of jumped me into the kind of helping out part time in my internship doing creative video as well, and then that's kind of like I had a what an eight month audition into this job, so to speak. Yeah. Um, so when you get a position like you get, talk about like one of the first things you do. I mean, as far as creatively goes, so you get that job, you're at BC, you're a young kid, you got a lot of knowledge, you have a lot of experience. What was something you said to yourself, being at a power five school, this is something that I want to change about, you know, their social media being there or something that you wanted to make yours. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, the first thing that I did when I like first really got social was to just look at what we used to do. I like, I had an idea of what I thought worked and what didn't work, but like I made probably, if you ask my boss, one of the most extensive spreadsheets that, that I could have ever made to that marked literally every post all the way back to, I think like August of 2019, just to see everything that worked and that didn't work. And then I think that's how you can figure out what, kind of work like what your people what your fans want to see and so that was one of the first things that I did and then I wanted to create a more relaxed kind of talkative social voice so to speak so that like I think of it that you want to see it, people interact more when you think of them like you are so how do you pers how do you essentially make people personify BC football as a person and so that's what I did. And I essentially, if you notice our voice on social, it's kind of text talky. It's, it looks like a lot of, like you're texting someone. There's a lot of emojis. It's, there's a lot of excitement. Like that's kind of what I'm looking for and like what I think works, in my opinion. So making it very relatable to the athletes, mm -hmm. to the students, recruits, right? All, all, all yeah. of that. Um, and now do you work with a team? Are you in charge of a team of people? Or are you kind of, everybody has their own little department. Talk about how you guys all work together to create things on Twitter and Instagram or any other source of social media that you put things out on. Yeah, I'd say there's specifically five of us that work on football. There's me. There's um, Joey Mizutani, who's our, another video guy, but he's more, um, I'd say more hockey focused and focused on kind of more grand scheme, all of the sports. Anthony Garrow, who's our graphic designer, you see all of his work and he's our photog. He's incredible. Um, Brendan Flynn, who's our secondary contact for um, football and he runs, he does a lot with social. He's the one that's running our Twitter account during games. Um, and we kind of work a ton on like, fun stuff that we want to post and what stuff we want to do. And then Jason Baum, who most of the public knows, is the who's in charge of our whole office and he's our primary football contact. That's awesome, man. So, you know, it's social media department, obviously a big thing with working with the football program is right when you got your job, um, a new head coach was hired in Jeff Halfley, who I think is amazing to me, one of the best coaches in all of college football, what he's done with BC and the level. I mean, if you watch ESPN guys like Kirk Herbstreit, you know, they're quoted in saying watching BC football, there's just something different about them this year. How much do you guys work with the team? So when you're putting out content or putting out some of the things and we'll show in a little bit, some of your stuff, um, how much do you work with the team or coaches or how much access? I mean, talk about Halfley, his staff, the, the, the players. I mean, what is your relationships with these guys? Yeah, I mean, we, I, the best thing for a video person is to have 
the team know who you are because then they're way more they're way more willing to interact with you and see stuff that you're doing and like want to be a part of it and that once they realize that you are putting out good stuff they really want to be a part of it so like during training camp we were there every day we're talking to these guys we're doing a ton with them um the coaches will see us there so like i am someone who will push the limits on where i can go during practice especially and essentially the coaches know if i'm in the way just to yell at me and get me out of the way because that's i want there sometimes you want to get a really cool shot and so you have to be as close as possible and if they are let you there they, then they let you there and so we i mean i interact with them probably a ton i play f- flag football with the coaches sometimes and like with some of their st- um, managers and like ga so we'll play flag um it's real i'm really lucky because so coach halfley's assistant used to be the intern with me last year so we're all super close there and then like i would say we um collaborate the most with the recruiting um staff so in my opinion social and at the college level your number one audience is recruits everything should be geared towards recruiting in some way so if you're talking to recruits and you want i mean if you, if you, the only way that you win is if you get recruits and you get good talent so that we they'll see stuff that they think we want to do we'll kind of run ideas by them there's a couple of them that we're really close to that we talk with all the time so that's kind of the biggest i think collaboration point right awesome and and talk about halfley i mean i listen i listen to his stuff online i listen to him press conferences i mean the guys he seems like the real deal i mean you guys mm-hmm. seem like you're a tight knit you know group that you all get along with each other um talk about working for a guy like that because his energy just seems unreal i mean is he off the field the same way you kind of see him on the field yeah i mean he's a super super nice guy i mean the biggest thing that i noticed was like the he flew down to birmingham last year for the bowl game and we got into the um we got into the elevator to go up to the press box and i just happened to be there and the um the woman working in the elevator is like hi guys how are you and coach Affley was the first person that was like oh i'm good how about you like how are you doing like that was all you really need to know like he's an actual like he's really actually cares about you as a person and i mean he wears it on his sleeve um yeah and i just like he's one of those guys i've had a few coaches on here uh when i hear them talk they, they kind of get me juiced up a little bit and just listening to his stuff and his content and how he gets his team to play week after week against the best mm-hmm. you know the acc is is rising and and there's a few there's quite a few good teams in it that you know can start rivaling these sec teams a little bit um and and i love it. and i love what he's doing over there um recruiting you mentioned the whole recruiting aspect talk to your audience or talk to this audience about how involved you are with recruiting so you said your number one opinion is that recruiting is one of the biggest thing about the type of stuff that you put out there so how do you lower kids in big recruits that are looking at these other schools to say bc's doing something different i'm new here this is our content this is our coaching staff these are our players i mean how involved are you in that recruiting process um i would say um involved to an extent where I don't really interact with recruits. I don't talk with recruits, but like, I mean, we have enough access where we can show these recruits exactly what they're going to see when they get here. And it's great when you have a staff, like the one that we have that allows us to have access like that. And then you can um, kind of show how like real coach Halfley is and how like he's just real genuine. And so, I mean, recruiting wise, like that's kind of where I'm at. Um, Our graphic designer though, like, I mean, you see it recruits left and right posting graphics about like, um, they post graphics about like, they're like wishing them good luck, happy birthday. Like we're we're sending those, we're making those and we're showing them love that way. But I think, we kind of see how like there's a bunch of stat graphics that we'll post that actually come from the coaching staff that are like they they want to highlight certain things and so we we work with them that way awesome 
Um, this is great, man. I, I just, I love this stuff. I'm kind of a geek on this stuff. So to hear all this, in, in, you know, as a high school coach and someone who's been involved in high school football for a long time, when I first took over my first program, one of the biggest things that I wanted to do, Brent, was up our social media game. And you got some mid 30 year old guy on an Android trying to figure it out. And um, it, to me, that's so important for a school that I coached at was, you know, we had kids coming in from all different cities and towns. So trying to show off the program, the history of it, but also trying to put different content content out there that's just a little bit different than the other schools that might be recruiting the same exact kids. So that's great um, stuff. And, and I want to show off your stuff a little bit because um, I probably have stalked you for like three months. I like all your stuff and I reply and you're probably like, who is this creep? But I tell you, and I tell the audience this, that your stuff is some of the best out there in college football. If not, I argue the best. Um, and I know you sent me a few clips here. So I'm going to share this on my, uh, my Zoom account here. So if I make a little mistake and, and so on and so forth. But I'm going to put the clip up and maybe you can kind of just set up, you know, you sent me a couple clips and why maybe specifically uh, you sent th those clips. So just give me a second here to uh, get this all queued up. And I'm excited because I've been, I've been hyping this up for a while and I, and I love the stuff that you're putting together um, and, and I wanna be able to show it off. So um, this first video here um, is gonna be your UNC hype video. So we wanna talk to the audience a little bit about that uh, before we get that kind of strung away. Yeah, so this is probably my favorite hype video that I've ever done, probably my favorite video I've ever done. It was a completely abstract concept that was like, have you ever seen an eagle hunt? I wanted to kind of take that and show kind of mixing an eagle hunting with football and kind of how like so how essentially a defense hunts. And that kind of ran with the idea. And then we thought he'd be perfect for a voiceover. And we went Mark Herzlick without even thinking that Mark Herzlick is gonna bring back the craziest voiceover I've ever heard. <laughs> he went, we call it, the Bane voiceover because it sounds like he's trying to be Bane but and then I got the voiceover back and was like can you send me one with a normal voice too and he like bounced back and was like but this is such a great voice and I was like yeah but it's kind of all over the place I love it. and man. then yeah and so then me I went to work with it a little and Joey who's the other video guy was like, this is going to be incredible if you use his voice. So I was like, yeah, let's try it and see what happens. And then him and I sat for two hours in our office editing it with a voice, and it came out like this. I love it, man. So let's just play it here. Make it straight. Can you hear that pretty good? Yeah. No. Well, there's a reason for that. First, he flies high above the ground. High enough, you'll never see him coming. Second, you'll notice his eyes scanning the ground with vision unlike any other predator. <laughs> Look, it's likely once you're caught, you're not getting loose. You're lucky enough to experience a hunting eagle, you may start to feel your heart beat. Sweat dripping down the side of your face. Do you feel the rush of blood through your body? That's fear. <laughs> but you've probably never seen an eagle hunt because by the time you notice, it's already too late. It's already too late. I mean, wow. <laughs> talk about making something like that. Cause if I made something like that, I would feel like the man. I mean, talk about the love that got on social media. Yeah. That one did extremely well. Um, I, that's just one of those that you're like, I, I'm super, so I'm, I consider myself ultra competitive. So I look at probably what most other schools in the country do on a Friday night and see what else. And like, that one I was like, I felt pretty good about, but then I was like, 
like my week is Sunday to Friday. I'm making a hype video Saturday and Sunday. I make a recap and then Sunday I'm literally back making another hype video. So when I go literally my, I, we post a video on Friday and I'm already thinking of new ideas on how I can <laughs> like for the literally the next week. So it's just like quickly kind of like changing. I love it, man. Um, and we're going to set up this next clip, but I know this is pinned uh, on your Twitter account. This is kind of mm -hmm. pinned to the top of your page. Talk about this shot. I mean, you made some great stuff, man. So when I see you pick these two, I'm like, these two are phenomenal, but you've made some great stuff. So this is like the tip of the iceberg, man. Talk about yeah. this clip as we set it up here. Yeah. So the other clip is a um, shot we got from during training camp. I when I was a shootout for soldiers, this is the first time I've ever done this. And I ran around with a Ronin, which is essentially a, a stabilizer. So I can like actually pump my arms and it'll stay pretty steady. And so they're doing one-on-ones and I'm like, just give me one deep ball. Like just give, and I just wanted to literally run step for step with the guy and get the shot. And I got one chance. I got one deep ball and that was it and it worked <laughs> and i yeah i couldn't have done it better if i did it a second time or a third time and it just yeah yeah man it's a it's a phenomenal clip um and let me just get to sharing this because um i am you know doing this and i'm a little confused on how to do this all so i am uh here we go i think i got it all right perfect so let me just share this with you and again, this is one of my favorite of yours. I'm so glad that you, you had the audience kind of show this one off. Let's show this one to the audience. So um, let me just maximize it. Here we go. Oh, what a dime. I mean, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. What's your 40 time? What's your 40 time? Um, I have never had a real tested 40. I don't know. <laughs> so let's uh, talk fast, about enough that, fast enough that when I play five football with the cooking staff that I can run by people. I'll put it that way. Okay. I mean, listen, you went stride for stride with the wide receiver. I mean, the defensive back at one point was out of the picture, and you, you were stride for stride with the receiver with the camera in your hand. I mean, what, what, are, you, yeah. what are you carrying with that? What are you videotaping with that? So there's a – I don't have a camera. There's probably a camera that's the size of my palm, I would say. Yeah. On a Ronin that's like a, probably four, three feet. Probably – honestly, it's probably a little heavier than a lacrosse stick. We'll put it that way. It's like the same length as a lacrosse stick, maybe a little shorter, and it's – probably a little heavier okay but, so even more yeah. impressive i mean you're also <laughs> running with an object in both hands i'm assuming so you're not really running you know stride like you can really pump your arms so pretty impressive great shots um <laughs> and again you know check out you know was it b greenberg 96 on twitter yeah um some great stuff on there and, and this is, leads me into my last part so you know you're kind of an out of character guest to have on the show because i really mm -hmm. focus in the world of high school football and, and all high school sports both boys and girls um and i've had some tremendous high school coaches on but one thing that i talk to a lot of my coaches about is social media social media and so some of them are so involved in their social medias and really want to some of them want to gear it up to that next level. Um, and I couldn't think of a better person to kind of have on the show to not only show off the amazing content you have, to maybe talk to these high school coaches that seem to be mm -hmm. a lot of my audience here into what can high school coaches do? Some simple things. Again, I was a guy dealing with my Android, you know, and um, trying to do things. I actually tried getting a, um, like a hard knocks documentary on my, my football team the first year I took over. I had a crew coming in, cameras, interviews, microphones, the whole nine yards, and then halfway through with the guy just kind of vanished on me but that was the type of like hype that I wanted to bring to the school mm -hmm. to show what this football program is all about so I know there's so many coaches out there that do amazing things with it what's your advice to them what are some things that are must for them to do on social media to maybe up their program and, and have people who didn't have an interest maybe have a big interest I would say the biggest thing is just to show behind the scenes and show access I mean we talk about how so like everyone has a, essentially a camera in their pocket now. And there's a saying that the best camera is the one you have. So it's, we joke in our office because actually phone footage will do better analytically than like using a real camera sometimes. 
So when we post like stuff pregame and we st- we post stuff from practice, a lot of it is just us on our phones because it's what people really it's it looks like someone randomly could have shot it, and so I think that's why it works. So I think just having giving that access behind the scenes, which um, you have access to as a coach sometimes, and then just using what you have, whether it's your phone, whether it's um, maybe a small camera, like whatever you have access to is always the best thing. And just to show that behind the scenes, whether it's maybe you guys just want a huge game and your team's going crazy in the locker room, like that's what people want to see. They want to see all that energy because realistically everyone sees these kids on the field. And so, and these coaches on like have, how many people think coaches are just meatheads yelling left and right. And they're normally some of the most hyped people in the locker room after huge wins and going crazy. And that's what these kids see, but that's not what the public lovers well see. So. Huh. Yeah, it's great, man. I, and I'm telling you, social media is just what's changing the high school game, specifically in this area. I mean, it's probably, um, you know, all over the place. But in this area over the last few years, especially in Twitter and the high school football world and sport world, there is a lot of information out there and a lot of people posting. So to humanize your program, I think that's, that's just great advice. And what's your advice to athletes? I mean, those that are looking to get recruited to that next level. Um, I know kids put their highlight videos. If you look on their Twitter accounts, it's their height, their weight, their 40 time, their GPA, all all that um what's your advice to to young players that are looking to play at any level um as far as maybe promoting themselves on social media a little bit as well yeah i think we're entering kind of in a new world especially at the college level with um nil stuff and name image and likeness and we're going to see kids learning how to promote themselves and i think the best thing you can do is just to not be afraid to share what you're doing whether it's at a workout whether it's at a um whether you have pictures of you at like practice, whether you have pictures of you just working out on a field, lifting, like coaches, in my opinion, I don't know if they look at it, but I, I mean, they have to see it and be like, oh, they are working out in my, like, and I think there's a fine line between kids that are like, I think a lot of people don't use social enough because they try to look cool when they do. And they think that you kind of seem like, your self I self or pretentious or something when you're posting a ton of yourself but also like use it to your advantage post whenever post when you do big things share yourself share your like you make a big play and you have a picture of it share that like be proud of like the stuff that you do and be willing to share it wow Hey, listen, this is uh, this was a treat, man. I, I'm really lucky we're able to have you come on here. And again, I do mean it. The stuff that you're putting out there on social media, it's inspiring to me. I mean, I'm a guy from Boston, and I'll tell you, I watched, you know, average to minimal amount of Boston College football up until this year. And it wasn't just because the product on the field was more exciting to watch. It was really the social media, especially trying to build my brand and build this podcast. Going on there and seeing the stuff you put on there is just, it's awesome. And I share it, and I like it, and I retweet it, and um, – um, you know, you have a young, you're a young kid, you're 24, man, and you, I think you have a big career ahead of you. You went to Emerson. Emerson pumps out public relation people, communication majors, yeah. right? I mean, it's like the best in the country. As I was looking it up the other day. I could not believe the amount of people that have come out of Emerson. So yeah. you're a star right there, dude, in my eyes. So <laughs> um, I certainly am going to be keeping an eye on you as as your future goes and, and um, excited to see where it goes. But before that, we have a fun segment on our show called the Two Minute Drill. Um, um, and it's just like a two minute segment. I'm going to fire a bunch of rapid fire questions at you. Um, I do get one review. So if I want you to explain something a little bit more, I may <laughs> have you explain it and vice versa. I may ask you a tough question that you want to explain a little bit more. So I'll allow you to do that too. Okay. Um, but my coaches love this segment and uh, it's a lot of fun. So uh, I'm going to start the clock and here we go at BC. What would be, what is your favorite side of the football to work on during the week, the offensive side or the defensive side? Offense. Okay, why? I got to know because I'm a huge D guy. So as soon as someone says offense, I got to know. <laughs> I, just, I, I just think that um, there, I think we make more plays on offense right now. And I think our, going from a run-heavy scheme in last year to a pass-heavy scheme now, it just, it's fun to throw the ball around. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, that's what football is now, right? Everybody's yeah. just throwing the ball 35, 40 times a game, especially at the college level. Um, what was, you've had so many internships. What has been your favorite internship? Which one would you look back on and say, you know what? I love this internship the most. I'd say shootout for soldiers. The which one? Just shootout for soldiers. 
Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like that's probably what's kind of major, you know, major jump? Yeah. I think you know? that, yeah, I think that was the biggest one that kind of molded me into what I am. What's one, what is one word you would use to describe coach Affleck? Genuine. Genuine. Okay. Best photo or video you think you've ever taken in your life? Um, either the one that I showed you already, the running one or the one I got one of CJ Lewis. Uh, it was a wide angle of his one-handed catch against Louisville. Oh, in the back of the end zone, the corner yeah. of the end zone. Oh mm-hmm. my God. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. that's a good one. Um, mm-hmm. What's your favorite sport at BC covering outside of football? It might be a t- I'll let uh, you explain it. Cause I can already I tell. Think, it's it's gotta be women's lacrosse. Okay. Why? I'll let you explain Still it. The lacrosse guy. Love yeah. Lacrosse, lacrosse at heart. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, do you cover BC lacrosse at all, boys yeah. too? So you uh, there's no men's team. Okay, it's the um, one. And yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Touch the subject. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, <laughs> and and the and the last question that I'll ask you is, who's the most talented person you've ever worked with in this industry? Okay. Um. So. <sighs> uh, I'll let you explain because I know it's a tough one too. I mean, this. I'll, say, I'll I'm gonna shift this a little. So the smartest person I've ever worked with, his name is Tyler Steinhardt. He's a uh, he. So there is. I don't know if you've heard of the Premier Lacrosse League. I have. Yep. So he founded Shootout for Soldiers, and then went to something called the Lacrosse Network and was in charge of the whole Lacrosse Network at like I think 26 or something, 27, and then moved to the Premier Lacrosse League as their director of content and director of marketing. And now he's, I think he's leaving to do something outside of sports, but I've, in social, I've, I haven't met anyone smarter. He just, he just knows everything that's going on and knows exactly what to do at all times. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I feel like I can, you, you survived the two minute drill. I feel like I could talk to you for like hours about this stuff. <laughs> You're so interesting. Um, and as I said, I think you got a bright career ahead of you and we're really lucky to get you on here. And, you know, I love to check in with you sometime down the road and, and see yeah. how you're doing and seeing how other sports, but, you know, check him out on, on Twitter, man, be Greenberg 96. He, he's awesome. So thanks for coming on. I, I really appreciate it in that last segment, especially for my audience with those high school coaches, they're going to love the stuff that they saw. I think you're amazing and uh, I wish you well. So thanks for coming on. I uh, appreciate it. And from Beyond X's and O's podcast, I'm Anthony Petralis, Brent Greenberg. Um, Till next time. And thanks for having me. No problem.